Hello, today I'm going to talk about a PlayStation 1 series that I had whenever I was a child and how much I love it and cherish it and to this day still play it. I'm going to get into that right after I show you my shitty intro. <laughs> Out of all my friends, only two of them have actually come out and told me how much they hate the intro. I know it's shit. It could be worked on. But um, it's my first time making an intro. I know I can do a lot better. Um, I'm just going to leave it as it is for the time being until I can be asked making it better. The series I'm going to talk about was Siphon Filter. And I'm talking about the original Siphon Filter trilogy that was released for the PlayStation 1. Forget the rest of them, The Omega Strain, Dark Mirror and Logan Shadow. I'm going to talk about the first three games where the series was at its you know, peak. The atmosphere of Sight and Filter, there was something about it that was just so... What's the word? So intriguing, there was something that it just draws you in, it was addictive. And the gameplay, it was just, it was just brilliant, it was, just, it was nice to look at and nice to play. Three, Band Studio were the developers, 989 Studios from 1999 to 2000 were the publishers along with Sony Computer Entertainment, 2001-2007. Sound Filter was released on February 17th, 1999 and it had six installments all together with the last one being Logan Shadow released on the 2nd of October 2007. <laughs> Shut up. It's a third person shooter action video game series developed by Band Studio, formerly Editech. Ediac, I don't know if I pronounced that properly. In the series, Cyber Filter is given the name to the mysterious biological weapon. So the first one, the plot centers on special agents Gabriel Logan and Leon Zing here are tasked by the United States government to apprehend an international terrorist threat named Eric Romer. The first game is basically about Gabriel Logan and Leon Zing. And the plot of the first game is that they're trying to stop this uh, terrorist organization from releasing a biochemical weapon, a virus called a siphon filter. Basically you go throughout the game trying to track down Eric Romer. You basically have to stop him from detonating nuclear devices. Where is he going to be next? Where is his next target? Why is he doing this here? Take him out and put an end you know, to his reign of terror. The story itself, you know, it was very good and it was interesting and there's some nice twists and turns there. I don't think there was all that much character development, you know. Um, the characters are very likeable. You know, and whenever you play the game, that you know, I was immediately hooked into it. The character development isn't as such the main focus, but you do get to know the characters. They're pretty much, I'd say, near enough one-dimensional. But that, when I say that, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like, for example, Gabe Logan, you know, is you know a guerrilla warfare expert. You know, he's a good man. He doesn't harm, you know, the innocent. He's out to stop the bad guys. That's basically what it is. So what I loved about Siphon Filter, the gameplay was fun. The game mechanics were great. I loved how you could just run, uh, kill the bad guys, roll around. Uh, the gameplay was just perfect. You know, it had like its own wee niche to it. It had its own style, its own aesthetic. And it was using polygons at the time. You know, this is PS1 or in the 90s. And it was a really fun game to play, and it wasn't too convoluted either. The story might have been a bit complex while I wasn't the appropriate age to be playing it. There were some tough parts in the game, but for the most part, the game was just really entertaining. And every time you, you played it again and again each day, it just got more and more fun to play. The music, the soundtrack in that game, you can tell that the composer definitely worked their asses off to make that soundtrack as good as it can be and it fits every single level. Um, it's basically sound builder days where you know, they, don't, they don't make games like that anymore. Well they kind of do but not nearly enough. And I feel like you know it's a very underrated game. It never really got the appreciation and recognition that it so truly deserves and I would definitely love to see a remaster. And if they're gonna remaster it, don't bring back the game mechanics that they did for Dark Mirror and Moon Shadow. I'd rather they kept the original mechanics. You know, the big changes that they made after the third game for the Omega Strain, they were trying to fix something that didn't need to be fixed, and that's the downfall. The first three games, spot on. You know, that was all that they had it right, but then they tried to add something new, and that tainted it, it ruined it. You have another boss fight where you're on the radio tower and you have to like, disarm it, you have to do something with it, I think you have to sabotage it, I can't remember exactly what you do with it. And then this big chopper comes, and you have to take it down, and the music. Listen to this music. This music screams epicness. This is why I love this game, the PlayStation 1 era. Look at that.
Leon, I'm on the roof. Get ready for evac. Leon, I've triggered the timer and disabled the radar. I'm ready for pickup. I reach here. ETA 4. No, stop! No. Ah! Don't come on. Leon. Rip out all of these controls. Leon! Logan, I'm afraid she won't be giving you a ride. Rumor. But don't worry. I was kind enough to send one of my choppers. Beautiful, like, literally that gives me that gave me chills as a child. You knew something big was gonna go down. And that took me days to do that level up. You know, I was like 10 or 11, I shouldn't have been in the game but I was, and I managed to get it after a while. You just had to learn the behaviour of the helicopter. All the C4s that you planted with fuel tanks are gonna go off and you have to fight your way to the main gate as Markin says. Markinson. Leon's been killed. I need that chopper evac now. In 10 minutes, this place is gonna be a crater. Fight your way to the main gate. We'll pick you up there. And then I hope this shebang explodes. The first level, you have to disarm all these bombs around Washington. The second one, one of the bombs went off, and you have to put the subway is on fire, and you have to make your way to the exit. You come to your first boss fight with Anton Gerdu. Anton Gerdu! I hope Romer's paying you enough to die for him. Gabriel Logan! Oh, he's the optimist. <clears throat> Look around, Logan. This hall contains a mosaic depicting the entire history of your country's wars and aggression. We are about to make an addition to it. I don't think so, Gerdu. It ends here. He's a bad man with a flamethrower, and you have to shoot his fuel tank until it explodes and burns him alive. He's finished, Leon. Get CBDC in here. Tell Benton I need an evac. Copy that. And then after that there, you have like your first stealth mission. And then you end up going to Romer's base. You have the option. It's, it's easier if you choose to go about it stealthily. Uh, because if, you, if the enemy is alerted to your presence, you're going to have constant reinforcements coming at you. And they can see where Gabe is and they know where you are at all times until you take that satellite out. So if you play that part and, and just take your time, be patient and think outside the box, uh, you will be alright. After that there, you're in no more bunkers. Sometimes for the shits and giggles I would just, you know, fire off the AK um, to set the alarm off as I was reaching the end of the level, because I could. Because it didn't make a difference, like the alarm already goes off, they already detect Gabe Logan's presence whenever you're in the bunker on the ground. Leon! I'm in the bunker. I'll catalog the missiles and then head for the elevator to the roof. Get ready for data transmission. The next level, quite a weird one. You know, I liked it though, where you have to go to the uh, stronghold, there's a church, and there's these scientists that are experimenting on test subjects, and you have to your, at that point, your boss is informing you just how dangerous the second for the virus actually is and what it can do. To the point where Gabe Logan, you know, he's hard as nailed, is literally shocked. My god, siphon filter. It's... Yes, it's quite remarkable. A virus genetically programmable to eliminate anyone or anything. Imagine a weapon that could target specific demographics, ethnic groups, that could wipe out whole continents, except for those chosen to survive. Our labs have been able to synthesize a very small amount of vaccine. I found the first group of patients. 
I'm going to administer the vaccine, but I don't know if they're going to make it. As soon as you have the site locked down, I'll order in Medivac. Help me. You're injecting the cure into all these uh, test subjects that have been tested that second for the virus out on. You find it after that there that the antidote that you were giving the test subjects was actually the site of the virus itself. So you practically killed those people uh, indirectly. Uh, Gabe didn't know that. Then the next part you go to Kazakhstan where it's the warehouse. And I love this soundtrack too. Listen to this. This was an interesting level and I remember the first time I was playing this year I didn't know what was going on. I wasn't, I, I tend to skip the cutscenes at the time, I just wanted to play the game where um, there's two different uh, armies shooting at each other and then I realised, you know, it would probably be easier if I slip quietly past these guys while they're shooting at each other and yes, that's basically what the game tells you, Leon, your partner tells you, you know while they're all shooting at each other, that gives you the chance to run past them. Because if they see you, they're going to start shooting at you and it's too much for you to take on. It's just easier if you ignore them and only shoot them if, if they're in your way. Gabe, with both sides killing each other down there, you should be able to stay out of sight long enough to get the job done. Be careful. The warehouse explodes. Some idiot was throwing grenades and blew up the friggin' warehouses. And then you have to find the entrance to the, the silo where the big nuclear missile is being kept. And <laughs> it's funny because it's the only way to get through it. And because of that idiot was throwing grenades <laughs> at Gabe, and the whole place is not on fire, all the other buildings, and Gabe has to make his way through the warehouses that are burning to the ground. Leon, ask Mara if she's sure the entrance to the silo caves is in this warehouse. It's burning to the ground. She's positive. We better hurry. That fire's burning out of control, and the whole place could collapse any minute. I'm going in. your way through the underground tunnels where it's dark and you have to use your torch <coughs> quite a lot because you can't see anything. In Cyberpunk 2, if you're in you know darkness, you don't have to equip the flashlight anymore. Uh, Gabe automatically puts on night vision goggles, which are actually better, and it's the same in the third game. And whenever you do see, you have to make sure you can shoot the guy it's right in the head because these guys have got flak jackets on them and they're actually, you know, the weapons that they use, like things like KG-34 and all, they they will pierce right through your flak jacket and it's like pretty much instant death. But you need to be quick and think fast. Oh. 
Leon, I found the elevator down to the silo. See if we have any Soviet blueprints online. I want to know where I'm going once I get in there. Our nine silos were comprised of three levels. There should be a launch computer on level one near the elevator. Copy. I'm on my way down. You reach the silo, and that's one of my favorite levels actually, where you have to stop the, um, the missile from being launched. Leon, I don't think this is an abandoned silo. There's an R9 Devyaka sitting here ready to launch. Fagan was planning something big. Can you see the launch computer? It shows countdown in progress, and the access codes I have won't let me in. Damn, you won't be able to stop it from launching. You have to get its self-destruct codes and detonate it when it reaches the atmosphere. Where do I find the codes? There's a panel on the missile itself, near its base. Get down to level 3 before it launches. Once it's launched, you'll have to get to level 2 to trigger its detonation. You have to hide in one of the compartments and the missile goes off. And then after that there you come out whenever the fire is cleared. <coughs> it's just so you can't get caught in the blast. And then you go down into the the um, where all the servers are, the, the computer mainframes, and you disarm the missile. I think you either redirect it off course or you just cause it to self-destruct before it reaches the, the destination. Leon, I made it. I'm triggering the missile's detonator now. NATO spy sets are tracking it. There it goes. Thank God, Gabe, you've done it. I'm downloading the virus information now. I'm ready for pickup. Don't you know when to quit, Logan? We'd have made a great team. I don't think so. And then after that there, uh, Eric Rumor <coughs> uh, is coming around the corner and he's uh, going after you, you have to take him down. It doesn't matter how many times you shoot him in the head, how many grenades you throw at him, how many um, grenade launchers you fire at him, it won't kill him. He has a grenade launcher as well, and if he hits you with that, it's an instant death. So you have to run and hide, and you have to throw gas grenades at him. Because canonically, gas grenades are what kill him, even if you shoot him in the head with everything you've got and throw all the grenades of the day you have at him, that's not going to take him out. You have to throw the gas grenades and he has to run into it or just throw it at him, hit him with it, and that's him done. Logan! 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 <laughs> Logan! <laughs> that, was, that was a fun level. The voice acting, you know, it's kind of cheesy and corny, but it works for what it is. You know, they, you can tell they really did try with that game. I noticed that there was a continuity error with the girl, the woman Mara Armov. In the first game, her hair is like auburn, as they call it. It's like gingery brown or so. And then in the second and third games, her hair is blonde. But what I'm trying to point out here, in the first game, in the opening sequence, um, it shows Gabe and Leon in a jungle where they're tracking around the north. And they reach their partner, Alice, find him dead. And it shows Mara there in that scene, and her hair is like Auburn. And then it's Simon Butter 3 retcon that there, where it shows that scene again, but this time you're actually playing it out, you're playing it as a level. And Gabe's wearing different clothes, wearing a junk, he's wearing a camouflage suit. Leon has a different voice actress, and Mara has blonde hair, and it's not in a ponytail, it's like long around her ears. <laughs> you know. They are coming. Go, torch it. Burn it all. But what about the serum? Leave nothing. Now I will show you how I deal with informants. Finish him. With pleasure. These are the coordinates Ellis sent. Over there. Yeah. 
It's Ellis. Executed. Leon, you find anything? The place is torched. I don't know what they were growing, but it wasn't narcotics. Romer knew we were coming. So what's our next move? We watch for the next viral outbreak. We won't have to wait long. Well? These are the coordinates Ellis sent. How much information was smuggled back to your agency? I'm not telling you anything. You'll have to kill me. Very well. Now I will show you how we deal with informants. Kill him. We pleasure. It's Ellis. Executed. Leon, you find anything? The place is torched. I don't know what they were growing, but it wasn't narcotics. Romer knew we were coming. So what's our next move? We wait for the next viral outbreak. It won't be long. And they took an off feature away where um, whenever in the first game if you switch your weapon from a handgun or to something else, uh, Gabe would you know put his hands down and just do this here, basically putting whatever weapon you had away and taking another one out. Right, and that, that would be time consuming, especially you know if you were in a gunfight and you're the one I want you to switch your gun. Um, whereas in two and three, when you switch your gun, it's just immediate. You know, it just appears. You know, shotgun, handgun, and his hand. There's none of this here. So even though it was more, the first game was more realistic, um, for the second and third games, it was actually I kind of prefer that they took that away because uh, it was a bit of an inconvenience. It was quite annoying in the first game whenever you would do that there every single time. This one feature that took away, it's not that um, big, but whenever, if you get killed in the first game, Gabe would groan. Uh, whereas in the second and third game, they took that away. He doesn't do that anymore. <clears throat> Even whenever he's on, if he gets caught on fire in the second and third games, he still doesn't make that noise. But in the first game, yes. <coughs> so I don't know why they did that. John Chacon was the original voice actor for Gabe Logan in the first three games. Um, I don't know why, but they didn't bring him back for 4, 5 and 6. Uh, James Arnold Taylor uh, took over in the voice of Gabriel Logan in Psycho Hunter, The Night History, and Dark Mirror, and Logan's Shadow. Um, James Arnold Taylor did a really good job. I mean, he, he, he sounds remarkably like John Chacon, but he's not fully there. And some people actually prefer James Arnold Taylor, but I would probably prefer John Chacon because um, Nostalgia, but like if they made an all one, I wouldn't mind James Arnold Taylor coming back. I can fly away, you go. It has nothing to do with you. Then what? Why are you retiring? I don't know. Maybe Cordell was right. It's time to move on. Look up the kid, try something else for a while. The business requires too many secrets. Ah, <sighs> uh, got him back. Oh. Oh, what's that? Damn, it needs a remaster. That game definitely deserves a remaster. It really does. It really does. <coughs> I find that there's similarities between Sight and Filter and Metal Gear Solid fans. It's very rare, well, where I'm from, that you come across a Metal Gear Solid fan, but you find them everywhere on the internet. It's the same with Sight and Filter. I feel like it's harder to find other players who not only play Siphon Filter, but love it the same way that you did, or that I did even. You know, <coughs> most people just want to play FIFA, Call of Duty. I want another Siphon Filter game, and I want it to be closer to the originals. <coughs> you know, 
to hell with the second Sound Brothers trilogy. It's just ugh, no. What they did there, like to me, that's not canon. To me, the story ended the third game. Seriously, they make Sound Filter four if they do that there. Just um, wreck on it and remove the last three games <laughs> from the canon, please. I love that. I should make an outro video. <laughs> I should just take the intro video and have it play in reverse for the R2 video. <laughs> Music and everything. Yeah, <coughs> seems fitting. <coughs> bye bye.